Institute of Technology. This is Tigers Hockey. Tonight it's an Atlantic Hockey matchup as RIT hosts Bentley. So glad you're with us here on RIT Sports Zone Live along with John DeTulio. My name is Gene Battaglia. Johnny, it's been a while since we've been here Friday and Saturday night back to back and the Tigers come in tonight on a roll. They are rolling big time. Talking with Wayne this week. Starting to get some separation from the rest of the league. They sit atop the standings. They're rolling. He loves their preparation. He likes how they're building that momentum going into February because after February means March. That means playoffs. Tigers are coming off a weekend down at West Point where they took three of a possible four points. Now back home for the first time since Thanksgiving weekend on a Friday, Saturday night back to back. And this is a Bentley team that comes in uh, struggling. They haven't won since the month of November, John. No, they've been struggling where the Tigers, everything is going well. Their penalty kill is getting better. Their power play is going well. Bentley 10th in the standings have been sluggish. A tough place to kind of get off the schneid coming here to Ritter and trying to beat the best team in the league. Bentley did win here last year. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Bentley sending out in goal tonight, Kyle Rank. He is going to be tested and tested often. Of course, the junior there, you got to look at his numbers. Not a whole lot of starts. Overall record, one, two, and two. Goals against average, not too shabby. But then again, he will be tested tonight by a high-flying Tigers offense. That is clicking. Joe Kelvy, the number one goalie, uh, probably will see him tomorrow night. Night. For the RIT Tigers, one of the big question marks this year, Johnny, entering the season, how would the defense be with all the graduation and, of course, uh, Jared DeMichael not being here anymore? Shane Matalora has answered those questions in the net for RIT. Well, they rode Jared a year ago, and they're riding Shane this season. He has been brilliant, to say the least. Look at those numbers. Beef, 9-0-2 overall, conference record, goals against average. He has their separation it's his job, not only uh, on Fridays, but on Saturday. He is their starting goalie, and they hope to ride him right through the playoffs. A sophomore from Salinas, California. That is correct. Yet to get a loss this season. RIT and Bentley tonight. John, what do the Tigers have to do to get the two points? Well, it's uh, we, you know very, very simple. We, we go to the keys. It's been the great wall of Shane. It's, he's unbelievable. He's just not giving up any goals. So he's, if he plays the game we know he can play, look out, Loretta. It's going to be a tough night. Uh, for Bentley and look at Bentley's power play six Ooh. for 77 just under 8% and the Tigers lead the nation there you go in penalty minutes uh, per game and then the Tigers the last team to beat the Tigers in the regular season here Bentley Bobby, so it's been yeah. done Bobby Priest with uh, a hat trick that night he has since moved on but uh, I don't think the Tigers look past this team tonight Johnny no no talking with Wayne he goes this, this team is focused and he goes well, he loves their preparation he expects to come out with tremendous energy. They're, they're atop the standings. He loves the separation. He wants to get even more as we get into February. Well, settle in mid-January. This should be a good one tonight. RIT taking on Bentley. The puck will drop next. This is RIT Sports Zone Live on the Time Warner Cable Sports Net. the Frank Ritter Arena. Johnny, the crowd, it's electric here tonight. It is electric. Another sold-out crowd. All the more reason why you get the new rink. Get more people in here. It is electric. Good to be back. Let's hope for a good game. Good to be back. Students are back. The band is back. The corner crew is back. And the Tigers, too, playing their best hockey of the season. Getting three of a possible four points at Army last week. Gene Battaglia along with John DeTulio. Glad you're with us here on the Time Warner Cable Sports Net. This is RIT Sports Zone Live. And Shane Matalora will leave it in the near corner. Centering pass in front. And Matalora will stick it to the side. As the Tigers just trying to get it out of their own end. And Lynch, who had his first collegiate goal last week, up to Brenner. Brenner trying to make something happen. He was double teamed and pushes it into the near corner. Bentley trying to get it out of their own zone and back out towards center ice. This goes Saracena. will get it back for the Tigers who change up on the fly. Cameron Burt into the Bentley end. will pull it wide. Now puts on the brakes. He's got Janda along with him. However, it's Justin Brenton taking it away for Bentley. Bentley in Massachusetts just outside of Boston. As now the Tigers coming back once again. Rank with a stick save. Uh, Hartley now the centering pass in front. Janda is down low. 
Burt couldn't get to it, and now come the Falcons. Hartley's been a great year so far. Eight goals, nine assists. Bentley needs to find Brenner at all times. 16 goals this season. Having a fantastic year for the Tigers. Tyler Brenner with the 16 goals. That is tied for third best in the nation. And he's only a junior. He's now Bentley will come up the ice. That's Cowd Ice. He'll dump it on in. And the Tigers can get it out of their own zone. In front, Rank will stick it to the side as Dakota came down low. Dakota whiffs, gets it back. Shot deflected wide of it. And as Kefez just trying to get it out, and Polavecchia will keep it in. Taylor McReynolds now trying to pull his way. Couldn't sidestep the defender, Switzer. And around to the near side. Tigers will hold it in. Now up the ice this goes. We got a penalty coming up, and it's going to be against RIT. Tigers leading Atlantic Hockey in penalty minutes. This is no surprise, Johnny. They took one right out of the gate. I mean, right in front. As I think they're going to get, they're going to get to Kodo with an obvious uh, penalty. So Bentley, which has been struggling on the power play gets an early opportunity. Jason Ellis, Steve Morofsky are your referees tonight. Adam Bellantori, Chris Amo, the linesman. But Bentley, to put it bluntly, Johnny, they are atrocious on, on the power play. Just under 8% they're converting. Needless to stay, that is last in Atlantic hockey. Anytime you're in single digits, that's cause for concern. I'm sure Wayne Wilson doesn't want to let the Bentley Falcons have any life here on this power play as Halt again will come into the near corner. The Tigers not able to clear a shot going through traffic. Rabel able to push it to the side, and the Tigers will send it down the ice, and they'll change up their penalty kill unit behind the play. We got 115 remaining on the penalty to Dakota as Ledford will push it up the right side. This is their leading scorer, Peterson, bringing it in. And the Tigers pick it right off. And Noise will backhand it down the ice. Some way really emphasized talking to him how the special teams are just getting better and better, especially the penalty kill. And Cameron Burt picking the pocket. And rather than go to the net, Cameron Burt, a very steady play, killing time, playing four corners here, if you will. Rank with the stick save. And up the left side, here's Peterson. Has it taken away, and the Tigers will send it right back, and we're learning real quickly why this uh, Bentley power play is at under 8% on the season. Boy, Janda would have nothing to do if they had, <laughs> as soon as they approach the blue line, Janda's right there, picks the uh, puck clean and uh, able to clear it. Janda in the Bentley end. Out of the zone this comes, and up the right side is Rickford. Rickford with Janda defending him. Shot going through the crease over to the opposite side. Bentley changing up some skaters behind the play. Dakota will come back on the ice. Ten seconds, but for the time being, Shane Matalor will hold on for the faceoff. Good to see Wayne Wilson back on the bench tonight, John. Yeah, a little under the weather. Like everybody's been fighting it now. And there you see Wayne. Sharp as always. Boy. Wayne Wilson not making the trip to Army last week, and that game was actually picked up on one of the Fox regional channels, so he actually watched it from home, John. Yeah. I, I, that can't be a pleasant experience, I would imagine. No, as a coach, stress. Stress for, uh, for both games. But, you know, they didn't really get Ws, which makes it a little bit easier when you're at home. Now, Wayne Wilson said uh, in a phone conversation this week, he... Still is yelling at the referees <laughs> from his couch. <laughs> and if you're wondering, well, why couldn't Wayne gut it out? You know, the last thing with a stomach bug you want to no. do is give it to your players. Thank you. You're right. And uh, luckily, that bug didn't transfer. And everybody on this RIT team healthy with one exception. Uh, that would be Potts. Brian Potts with tonsillitis tonight. Tonsillitis, Johnny. A little bit old. You think tonsillitis, you think young. Not somebody in school. But, yeah, he's not. Uh, he's out. And um, Trevin Eckensweiler also out. And then McReynolds, who is banged up, talking with Wayne. He's going to need, what, two surgeries when the season's over. Here's Murphy trying to sidestep. Making a nice poke check as Williams. 
Yeah, you know, the crowd's is a little off kilter. He is. <laughs> he's, he's fearless to say the least, but I mean, uh, Wayne understands this guy, you're not going to keep him off the ice. And he has put off surgery until the season's over. Mills will dump it in. This gives the Tigers a chance to change lines here. As we're a little more than five minutes into this game. So far, we've had one penalty against the Tigers. They've successfully killed off. No score here tonight. First time the Tigers are home on back-to-back -back nights since Thanksgiving weekend. It's been a long time. What a weird schedule. Not, I don't like it, to be honest. No, it's, it's a little goofy. It's all over the place. And then the one game they have at home January 1st, it's against Merriman. Here's Favitt. Centering pass, pushed it back to Lynch, and Lynch couldn't get full wood on it. Good back check by Bentley. And back down the ice, this goes. Yeah, Gensler there, able to get a stick on it. And made Lynch uh, put forth a weak shot. Corner crew chanting R.I.T. as the Tigers here have controlled the pace of the play for the most part. Still waiting for our first goal tonight. Off the ice, here comes Hardung. Harden losing his footing there for a moment. Dakota laying the check down low. Spivak over there as well. Malor will make the stick save, his third of the night. A nice little check there by Tyler Brenner. Over to the left side. Tigers coming right up the ice as Favitt will dump it in and get right off the ice. That's actually Lynch dumping it in. And Williams will come up the ice here for Benton. Both teams changing up. Mandalore will keep the play going as he leaves it there for Rabel. Along the near side, Janda, and up the ice, the Tigers come. Getting held up there was Hartley. Now here's a quick shot by Holt again, and right into the breadbasket of the goaltender, Kyle Rank. Good cover-up because Hartley was right there for the rebound and put back. Good cover-up. Tested early on, Rank standing tall. Kyle Rank just his sixth start of the season. And as we take another look there. Probably the toughest shot from the blue line the Tigers have. Hardest shot, no doubt, is Halt again. And there's a shot by Burt that goes through traffic. And Rank will hold on once again for the faceoff. That's a key cover up. No rebounds allowed so far. Able to cover up the last two shots. Faceoff will come to the left. On the junior goaltender, as there you see the shots on goal tonight. So the Campanelli taking the draw. Hartley for RIT. Campanelli winning it. And the Falcons dressed in the navy blue with the gold trim. The RIT Tigers in the white sweaters tonight. There's a shot right on in front, and Rank had a little difficulty and was able to cover up before Burt got there. Could locate the puck, almost cost him, but able to cover up. Split second prevents the Tiger goal. Look at Rank smiling about it a little bit down there. <laughs> he knew it. He almost let in a, a little soft goal. Hartley to take the draw once again here for the Tigers. And again, it's Campanelli winning it. And around to the near corner. Tigers just holding it in. Right out in front. Oh, and Janda couldn't get to it. Now behind the net, this goes. Hartley in the far corner. Trying to dig it out there. Two Bentley defenders on him. And back out towards center ice. This is Breton taking it wide. Breton pulling it out in front, going to the backhand. And Manalore with a good position. Not much of a chance there for Breton. Good individual move, though, but there you go, Shane. Standing tall, denying it. The centering pass out in front. Shane Manalore has not lost this season. John, is it fair to say he's ahead of schedule here? I think so. I think there were some questions about whether or not he was going to be the number one goal. He was kind of open competition. Who's going to win it? <laughs> he has solidified it, to say the least. Big blast by Kolovecchia goes off. Stick and out of play. Step aside with 11.51 remaining in the first. No score. This is RIT Sports Online at the Time Warner Cable Sports Network.
Wilson and uh, behind the bench with that stomach illness. Looks a little thinner in here of just a tad. <laughs> looks like he's down a few LBs, Wayno. I love the white shirt combo tonight. As Mitchell trying to poke it in on the opposite side. And I'm sure Wayne Wilson uh, likes you dissecting, hey. uh, you know, this diet there, Duddy. He's always in good, you know, good shape. But, you know, what? one of the benefits, I guess, of the stomach virus, he dropped some LBs to start 2011. Nothing wrong with that, Gino. You know, I'd rather eat salad and go for a run rather than do <laughs> be sick on the couch. But, yeah, Wayne Wilson not going to West Point last Friday or Saturday as Brian Hill's coaching the team up to a tie on Friday and the win on Saturday. It's McReynolds keeping it in down low, taking it right away. Taylor McReynolds in the slot. Oh, going right off the heel of his stick, and it'll be down the ice. Good play by Peterson there. Strip the puck. Here's Brenton behind the net and Ways is right on him. Up top, this goes to Williams. And Williams gets kind of a weak shot off. And Tigers out towards center ice as Mitchell will dump it in. Saraceno coming up with it for RIT. Now along the left side, here's Scotty Knowles. Had a shorthanded goal last weekend. Up top, Dakota whipping it. Beating it down low, was thinking that Knowles was going to cut to the net, wasn't there. And still, nope, not kept in by the Tigers. Here's Harden along the left wing. Shot deflected behind the net, this goes. Harden coming up with it, Dakota with the check. Kept in by the Falcons along the near side, Spivak deflecting it away. And Dakota will push it over to Knowles on the opposite side. Tigers still, however, cannot get it out. No score here in the first at the Ritter. Switzer, shot, Matalora with the save. Folks, we want to invite uh, you to be uh, communicating with us here tonight. Facebook is the place, or you can send us a tweet. And there are the addresses right there. If you have a question, we'll read it on the air. And... Uh, Send it to us, facebook.com, ritsclive.com. And there is the Twitter address for us, sc underscore live. And it's along the near side. Yeah, ask John how he's going to handle tomorrow night. We have a lot of fun here, buddy. Yes. I think we'll do, uh, you know, the NFL score right in the, <laughs> the box of the game here tomorrow night. I'm worried about you tomorrow night. It's all right, buddy. I'm glad, you know, I'll be fine. I'm focused. I'm a professional, Gino. Kafez, or <laughs> they'll send it back down the ice. It'll just roll and roll and finally go for icing as the puck will come all the way back to the Bentley end of the ice. As there you see Elliot Rabel. One of the freshmen. One of the freshmen that just keep getting better and better. Lynch, Rabel. Uh, you're seeing the, uh, the growth. There you see the next men's live game, and we'll be here tomorrow night. That's a 7 o'clock face-off. Tonight's game sold out, I would guess, tomorrow night. Pretty close to it as well. Let me add Adam Mitchell there, another freshman who just keeps getting better and better. A scoring machine. See where they put the face-off here. They're going to they're gonna keep it in the zone? Not so sure yet. As it goes up over the glass and out of play, they, indeed they will keep it in the Bentley end of the ice. The faceoff coming to the right of goaltender Kyle Ryan. Favitt taking the draw, winning the draw. Brenner will set it up top, shot right in front. Lynch knocked it down. Not sure he meant to do that. And into the near corner. Sending it around is Rickford, but the Tigers leading score. Brenner will hold it in. Favitt over there as well, trying to take it away. And back out towards center ice, this goes. Bentley a good defensive team, there's no doubt about that, John. Both That's their strength, is their yeah. defense, there's no question. In front, right in front, Brenner with time, and the goal, Tyler Brenner is 17th of the season, and the Tigers go up 1-0. What a pass, what a pass, and then more importantly, Brenner able to retrieve the pass, gather the puck, and then find the back of the net for the 17th time this season. Third best in the nation now as we take another look. And, John, you're absolutely right. Look at this pass. To Noise. Right up. Noise with a great individual effort. Gets Brenner there. Didn't panic. Gathers the puck. And then finds the back of the net. Did not panic whatsoever. 
I'll give some free advice to Bentley. If you're going to give Tyler Brenner all that time down low, yeah, they gave him all kinds of, they got to get a body on him. You can't leave him alone and able to just gather the puck and then get good stick on it. Just the one assist on that. Noise with the assist. That comes at 10.55. And Noise, again, one of those freshmen on this team with more ice time, more playing time, gets better and better. The Tigers tonight, you know, it, that part of the reason all these freshmen in the lineup, they, they just don't have any bodies. It's only one healthy scratch tonight. That's for Jeff Smith. He's now up to second in the nation, we're told, is now the shot and right into the breadbasket of Shane Mattelore. Boy, a strike first, the Tigers. I mean, Bentley, able, you know, keep it, keep him off the board because of the play of Kyle Rank. Stop some early shots. But paramount for, I think, Bentley to just keep it in a one-goal game here to maybe the rest of the period. Now, hardly to take the draw for the Tigers. Kept in the zone by Bentley around to the far corner this goes. Hartley getting over there, and he's going to bring it up the ice for the Tigers. RIT leading 1-0 on Tyler Brenner, 17th of the season. Right in the slot, taken away by Bonnet, and the long, nice pass connecting is going off the stick of Peterson and back out towards center ice. The Tigers coming up, burned. Oh, nice feed to Hartley. Couldn't connect. Hartley in the far corner. Back up top to Janda. Good defensive slide there by Peterson to block it. Hartley and Bird along the far corner. Hartley coming up with a nice feet out in front and rank deflected before Janda could get to it. They're going to add a second assist to that to Lynch. Is now Hartley in front. Bird right on the doorstep and Rank able to swat it away. And Peterson near the, in the end of his shift. He is gassed and has to dump it down. Right, good play, good stretch. Just able to get the stick on it barely to prevent possibly another goal. And we get an offside call with 7.32 remaining here in the first. The Tigers lead 1-0. This is RIT Sports on Live on the Time Warner Cable Sportsnet.
the Tigers will change up. Good work, good shift. With Reynolds working hard, doing what he does best, blocking shots. I gotta say, John, I think he's my favorite Tiger. <laughs> he's fun to watch. I mean, the electricity, the energy goes up. When he's on the ice, he always makes his presence known when he's on the ice. So valuable to this Tiger team is now over to the opposite side. Bentley will keep it in. 23 remaining on the minor to Chanda. Knowles couldn't get it out. Knocked right down in front. Over the left side to Cotto coming over to defensively. Big shot by Cowdice. will go right behind the net. Sitting right on the net. Picked up by Bentley. 10 seconds remaining on the power play. Speed back. Now it will be sent. Does not go into wow. the Bentley bench. Thought it would. And that will do it. The Tigers have killed off a five on three to begin this second period. And listen to these fans. Can't execute it any better with the Tigers just did. Starting two men down here in the second. And that was a big opportunity for Bentley to get back into this game. Now the Tigers will come up the ice. Sean Murphy cutting to the far corner. Over to the opposite side, Cam Bird. Line made on the ice with him. And that's going to be kept in by Hartley. Down low to Murphy, now behind the ice. Brenner shot in front. Hartley in front, Rank making the save, and it's deflected all the way down the ice. Icing is waved off here, won't get there anyways. It's Saracino. Trying to get it out for the Tigers. 3 nothing. all goals coming in the first period. Tyler Brenner, Andrew Thavitt, and Mark Kornakia. And this will go for icing with 17-10 remaining here in period number two. Invite your comments on Facebook. Write to us. Johnny and I will read it on the air if you have a question or just a comment on tonight's game. We want to get interactive with you. Facebook.com backslash RITSC Live. Or you can reach us by Twitter, and there you see the address as well. Interactive. And it's now Murphy to take the draw. Over to the right side. Hartley coming up with it. Trying to get around his man. Murphy instead will get off the ice. The Tigers will change up behind the play. As of course, they couldn't change up with the ice in there before. Now, Burt will send it back down the ice. Favitt is over there, along with Brenner. Rabel has to back off just a little bit. And Halt again. Tigers will... Just continue to play here. It's near center ice. Now Tyler Brenner with some room to operate. Brenner feeding in front. The Lynch. Oh, it was knocked down in front. Good defense there by Bentley. And up come the Falcons. On the left side, that was Peterson. And the Tigers gathering up their center ice. Here's Lynch cutting it wide. Now he'll put on the break and wait for some teammates. In front of Favin, and it's a goal. Lynch to Favin. Boy, what a pass by Lynch. He spins around, looks to the center, and there's Favitt. I don't know how he got the pass in there. Super pass. And Favitt with his second goal of the game. Watch Lynch here spin around, keeps his head up, which is key, locates Favitt out there just sneaking into the crease, and there you got yourself a goal. But good play by Lynch. Got to wonder if Kyle Rank uh, was wondering. You, you see Brenner right on the doorstep. If that might, he might have been on his mind there. That's one he should have come up with. For sure, there's Lynch, a freshman. Great pass. So Andrew Thabit, no doubt about that one. Ninth of the season for Andrew Thabit. And Lynch getting an assist. This is an offside. And Tyler Brenner with his second point of the night. And the Tigers are threatening to make this a route tonight. Four, nothing our score. Four zip. They're rolling all phases tonight. They've just been just solid. Dakota will send it over to the left side. McReynolds. And off the ice come the Bentley Falcons. Not much offensively, and there's a, a good example right there is Justin Brent just overskated the puck. That gives Kolovecki an opportunity. Kolovecki with his head up. We got Mitchell cutting to the net. Now the centering pass to McReynolds couldn't connect. Uh, and the Tigers have to back off defensively here. And as Spivak will gather it up. Try to hit McReynolds, but he sends it back down the ice. 
No icing on this play. Yeah, boy, big difference. Watch how quick the Tigers advance the puck as opposed to Bentley. How they move the puck off ice. It's just a big contrast. Kind of looks like Bentley just got off the bus here, John. <laughs> they just don't have their legs. Tonight. No, they don't. They really don't. The Tigers have had energy from the opening face. Here's Cowdice coming up with a hard on the and back to the net as well, but the Tigers put an end to that quick as noise. Here's a two-on-one. Finding Kornakia. Back to Murphy. In front. Oh, the flex and blind up over the net. Uh, maybe the Tigers got a little too cute on that one. Now the shot knocked down. Kornakia and the save made by Kyle Rank. Oh, the Tigers tonight. Another opportunity. There you see Kornakia, and you know it's your night. Another big smile by Mark Kornakia. Well, Gino, every time the Tigers get possession of the puck, they're getting a quality shot. Seems like every time down. And they had two good looks there. There you see the last four in. Boy, oh, if Rank doesn't make that save, you have Murphy and Noise. Right there on Hold the down. doorstep, we get a timeout from Bentley. Not too often you see Let's the go. opposing coach use their timeout. This is not basketball, timeout, folks. And yeah, there you see head coach Wayne Wilson, Brian Hill, scheduled to be joined by Brian uh, during the second intermission tonight. As uh, the corner crew starting to chant <laughs> back up goalie. <laughs> well, I think one more and you may. Kelvy, who is a senior. Hey, if you want to meet some of the players, head coach Wayne Wilson, come on down. The Tigers played with Canisius the night before. We want to invite you down on Saturday the 12th at the Barnes and Noble second floor. So, and of course, this is going to be a better room with the Ronald McDonald House. So, again, uh, come on down. We'd love to meet you. Looking forward to that coming up uh, a few days before. Valentine's Day. And, uh, boy, the corner crew was right on that as Joe Calvi is now in net. Calvi, the normal number one. Calvi on the season, a 4 6 and 1 record. A point nine two one save percentage. Stats just a little bit better than Kyle Rank. But at this point, John, uh, I'm not sure <laughs> if it's going to matter all that much. Well, you got to get some help in front of him, too. Which has really let Rank down tonight. Uh, just the Tigers have just had their way. They're not, Bentley is not slowing them down at all. Faceoff going to come outside of the zone back down into the RIT end of the ice. 14 11 remaining. And there you take a look at Joe Kelly from New Lenox, Illinois. He's played in 72 games in his career. He is a senior. And you'd figure he'd be in the lineup tomorrow night. First of a two-game set here. Last Atlantic hockey team to win here was Bentley. And you remember back to that night, uh, it was like a playoff atmosphere. The RIT wearing the pink jerseys. Yep. It felt like a March game. It really did. Lynch in front. Brenner, oh, just off his stick. Another good opportunity there for RIT. It's Altigan will send it right back. Rabel waiting for everybody to get outside. He'll dump it in. The Tigers will use their fortune. Lynch gathering it up. Centering it right out in front to Brenner. Leaving it down low to Fat. Lynch getting some good time tonight. Rabel is back on the blue line here as Brenner now creating some space for himself. Good movement by the Tigers. Halt again with some room. Halt again. The quick wrister and the glove save made by Joe Calvi. Took it right out of the air. Good look. Good shot. Good stop. And again, the Tigers. You don't see that too often when you can skate around in somebody's end. You don't have a body coming out to challenge these guys. No, no one. They're not getting any bodies on them, and they're able. I mean, they've had the puck down there. It seems like for almost a minute. But they've had possession of the puck at the Bentley end. Speedback can't hold it in. And Bentley, and it's going to go up and into the Bentley bench. We'll have a faceoff coming up. 13-14 remaining here in period number two. We'll be back with you tomorrow night on the Time Warner Cable Sportsnet in spectacular high definition 10:26 for our 
local viewers in the Rochester area. Now Mitchell couldn't get to it in time up the left side. And Bentley, the Falcons, over the blue line. Spivak knocking it down. Campanelli in the near corner coming up with it. And behind the net, this goes. Spivak backhanding over to Mitchell on the right side. And Bentley will just back off here and give up the play. Get back on defense. Mitchell, Rister, high over the glass. McReynolds will hold it in. Dakota. And Bentley will change up here as things have slowed down here in period two. We've hit a low here. Tigers leading 4-0. Two goals tonight by Andrew Davin. Helped him out. R.I.T. Here's Kolovecchia. Kolovecchia leaving it right there to Mitchell. Mitchell gets knocked right down to Stevens. Good play there for Bentley. Murphy coming over, trying to get that puck away. And Bentley will come right up the ice. Saraceno back defensively for our IT. Matalora making the save and not giving up a rebound. 12.02 remaining here in period two, and the faceoff will remain in the Tiger end of the ice. Yes, let's take another look at this last shot. And again, the key here, John, just one shot. That's it. That's the thing. That's what Shane is. That's why he's been so good. He just does not give up many rebounds and covers up. He just locates the puck. He's moving well. He's hot right now. And he's extremely hot. Makes another save, and Jared Rickford not able to get to it in time. And with that, we'll step aside. 11.59 remaining in period two. Tigers four, Falcons nothing on RIT Sports Online at the Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. Next time you're in a Tim Hortons, you'll know Johnny. Go get Chippy. When you're down four zip, eh, remember you got to come back and play again tomorrow, and you know, a little pride's got to kick in here somewhere. Keep this game respectable and get ready for tomorrow night. Well, this all starts because Calby has some difficulty with this. You can see he has no clue where that is. And then Noel skates in. There you go. All right. Uh, it didn't take too kindly to poke in the stick towards Kelby's mask. Ryan Kafez with the shove on Knowles, but they're just going to have that as a no call. 4-0 RIT. Hartley taking the draw, winning the draw for the Tigers with Bentley stepping in and up the ice this comes. Holding and cuts it off and will send it back the other direction. On the left side, and Rabel. Gets checked behind his own net. Cameron Burke. Feeding it up to Hartley. And the Tigers behind their own net here. As Holt again. Up along the left side. Over to Cam. Burke trying to cut toward the net. Has it poke checked away. Cam getting it right back. Speed back, and we're going to have a, an offside call. Face off coming outside the zone with 10 31 remaining here in the second. You know, it's still a lot of time. We've still got a full period, a half of this period, so. Yeah, still we're not 30, even halfway through the game. <laughs> it's still, still 30 minutes of, of hockey to be played. Uh, so, I mean, for Bentley, that's how I, I should be your approach. Still a lot of hockey to go. Four goals is an awful lot to come back from, but. You know, peck away at it. Do what you can. Has Brenner up along the right side. Brenner centering it to Fabbitt. Bennett, the backhand looking for the hat trick. Couldn't get it. That's one thing to keep tuned for tonight. See if Andrew Fabbitt could get a hat trick for the Tigers. Is now on the near side. Lynch, this line has had a great night so far. Accounting for three of the Tiger goals. Fabbitt, one of his two actually came shorthanded. And Fabbitt coming up with it again. Cross ice pass. Nice speed. Big blast. Oh, and the save made. Oh, it's Tyler Brenner. I'm sure he wanted that one back. And you saw the frustration. 
Like, how did I miss that? And a great look. And Calvi lined it up and stopped it, but Brenner, <laughs> boy, did he wind up. I don't care how much padding they wear, John. Would you want to get in front of this? No, thank you. <laughs> I mean, watch this. I mean, Brenner gathers the puck, has time, spots it, winds up, and not happy with it. You see what Brenner, he was going five hole there. He was. He was trying. Matt Alora will just make the save and not take any chances as Harden was bearing down. Face off coming up here in the RIT end. You take a look at Brett Harden. By the way, there is a, a Bentley player from Rochester. I haven't seen him on the ice tonight. Number 15, Joel Goodson. I knew I was going to say that. Joel Goodson was in risky business. Go Joel Goodsell. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Joel, Good <laughs> Joel Goodsell. Princeton could use a guy like Joel. Yeah, oh, so. yeah. There you yeah, go, so. buddy. <laughs> it's a great line from a great movie. So uh, we'll look for Joel Goodsell. I apologize to the Goodsell family. I'm sure they're watching tonight on the Time Warner Cable Sports Network. We're keeping an eye out for your son here tonight. They haven't put him on the ice yet. Good anymore. player from McQuaid. Good player. <laughs> Played him McQuaid helped lead them actually uh, early in his career won a state championship as a freshman That's correct and then uh, went to play for the Bridgewater Bandits and there he is right on the bench there right in the middle there leaning over number 15 Mark Trigali our director finding him on the bench gotta tell coach Soderquist get him on the ice here tonight provide a little spark bring some of that McQuay toughness to the ice is now behind the net this goes his noise defensively trying to get this one away Tigers pushing it up the ice here's Mitchell over the red line gets held up right there Switzer with a big hit no call on that under nine to go here in period number two Tigers went off to a three nothing lead after one the only goal here in the second Andrew Fabin getting his second of the night as now that puck's going to trickle over through to Matalora will hold on for the save and now a little pushing and shoving as noise coming over there. See the hitting picking up. Mitchell got hit pretty good. Left the ice slowly. That's his uh, helmet off there on the bench. As there you see the nice cover up there by Shane. Just doesn't give up rebounds. R.I.T. band playing here, Looney Tunes? <laughs> Is that what that was? Yeah. <laughs> Expect Porky Pig to come out here and say that's all for so. Pretty close to that. Tigers get another one. That might do it tonight. Four nothing is our score. We are still in period number two. Gene Tagli along with John DeTulio. Our director is Mark Frigali. As Matalora will push it behind the net. Oak along the left side. Scott Knowles will lead the charge here for RIT. Nice cross ice pass finding Murphy. Murphy getting held up there. Back to Rabel. Delayed penalty coming up. Matalora coming off the ice. We're in front. Deflected. Knowles knocking it down. And Calvi will hold on for the face off. And the Tigers will be back on the power play. Which is not a good sign. Another mistake here by the Falcons. Tigers now back on the man advantage. As there you see Trent Bonnet making the long walk here. Number six. We'll see if we can't pick it up here on the replay. The Tigers again able to get the puck six, deep. Trent Bonnet. There it is. Two minutes for high sticking. That's high Bonnet. sticking. And yeah, if you go up high, sticking. John, that's Proper the rule. Call. Yeah. Right there, right in front of the official. So another mistake by the Falcons and the Tigers back at it. Rickford gets it out of the zone, but the Tigers quickly back into the zone as Brenner will dump it behind the ice. Behind the net, rather, and the uh, far corner Favitt looking for his third of the night. Burt, nice play there. And Bentley coming up short-handed here. And a de delay penalty coming on the Tigers. So quickly that power play, just 27 seconds into it, is over. And it's going to be on Favitt right along the boards there. Interference the call on yep. Andrew Favitt. And he was pleading his case. Didn't believe it was on him, but going right to the box. You see the snow on the backside of Andrew Favitt's jersey there. Hard to see from it that angle. Yeah. Slightly behind the play. All right, team penalty number 28, Andrew Favitt. Two minutes four interference. That's better. So second time tonight we've had four on four play. 
That comes at 12-20, the penalty on Favitt. Matalor, another save. And again, uh, Matalor not giving up a rebound. 16 saves so far this evening for Shane Matalor. He's made everyone look easy. It's Hartley to take the draw here. And the Tigers over the near side, no ways. Long cross ice pass. As Hartley trying to cut his way, Calvi coming out. And the Tigers will keep it in the zone as Noise up along the far side. Bird over there as well. Now backhanded, intercepted by Saraceno. Saraceno waiting for everybody to get outside. Not able to, and the Tigers have to back off. The delayed offside. Nonetheless, it's Bentley bringing it up. Here's Switzer, the quick shot. Save made by Shane Metalora. Switzer gets it back in the far corner, chasing down his own rebound. Up top, Bentley working it around. 40 seconds remaining in the Bentley penalty. They'll go on a brief power play. And it's now shot cleared wide. Burt knocking it down as that centering pass is headed toward Cloutier. And Burt will bring it up the ice. Cameron Burt. And four on four action. And shoot it over to the left side. Noise coming down just a little bit. And some pushing and shoving behind the play. Ten seconds, and Bonnet will be back on the ice for the Falcons. Here's Tyler Brennan centering it in front. We've got a penalty coming up here. Quick shot, knocked down. Matt is not sure who it's on, but just as the whistle goes, the Bentley Falcons penalty has expired, but looks like they're going to have somebody else back in the box, John. We're going to look at the uh, replay here. Another mistake by the Falcons. He's one after another. Is Ryan Kafis. There it is. Oh, right there. Kafis on, on noise. That's right there. Trippy. And that comes at 13.53. There's no excuse for that. Just not a heads up play. Over the left side. So again, back to four on four. Ten seconds from now. Stepping out of the box will be Favitt, and the Tigers will be back on the power play. Still four on four. Favitt steps out. It's deflected in front. And that's going to go officially as a shorthanded goal is yep. Justin Breton with a nice deflection, and Bentley is on the board. It's still a game. It's four to one. Yeah, they get right back in it, shorthanded, albeit, but they get themselves a goal, get a little, uh, a little bit of a break, and they're back in the game. Brenton left uh, all alone on the near side. And Favitt had just stepped back out onto the ice. So the KFES penalty, 130 remaining at the Tigers on a power play here. 41 is our score. Mitchell coming up with it in the slot. Shot going wide of the net. And the rebound coming over. Tigers will keep it in. Halt again up top. Over to the right side. Now down low. Brenner is sitting in the slot. Tyler Brenner going off his stick. Has to go back and get it. Over to the opposite side. Favitt will leave it down. Now Halt again. Tigers rotating it around. They like to get back to that four goal advantage. And Bentley thinks otherwise. I'm going to send it down the ice. Halting and going back. For under five minutes to go here in period number two. On the left side, here's Andrew Favitt. Tyler Brenner cannot come up with it. Bentley with a, another opportunity. Tigers have to be careful here. Under 30 seconds to go in the penalty to Kafis. He's now playing a little better, getting a little more physical. I think Kelby coming in has helped them a little bit. Give him a little bit of confidence. He's made some saves. Manalore, the big pass up to Lynch. Lynch has his skates taken out from him. Gets it right back and uh, now they're going to say he was out or something. I don't know, they're going to have the faceoff coming outside the zone here with just eight seconds remaining in the penalty to Ryan Kafez. 4.15 remaining here in period number two. 
Here you see Andrew Thabit, one of the captains on this team, got two goals tonight. And kudos for the Falcons here, kind of regrouping. They see a little bit more energy. And they get the goal, it's 4-1. They could steal another one here, then it uh, got ourselves a real good, real good game going into the third. Another offside call, uh, Saracino on the wrong side of the blue line. Yeah, the shots on goal, John, it's kind of surprising. Tigers just with a slim 22-18 advantage here. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, of the 18 shots, how many were quality looks. It's hard to believe they got 18 shots. Saracino will bat it in. Switzer along the left side. Now an opportunity for the Tigers as Lynch gets taken down. And a penalty coming off the Switzer here of Bentley. So just like that, we start throwing bouquets at Bentley for getting back into this. Tigers will be back on the power play when we come back. 4 1 RIT leads here. RIT Sports on the Time Warner, Cable Sportsnet. Lynch with the puck, who's had a sensational type of night. And there you see Switzer will come in. Looking for the penalty here. Still has it, and there you go. They're tripping right there. And there's the call. He's reached out with the stick, tripping of Lynch. And again, the Tigers on the power play. Bentley's actually out shooting our IT in this period, 10 to 8. But the Tigers, as you mentioned, with the man advantage here. 4 1 is our score. Big blast by Halt again. Going wide of the net. The Tigers getting the rebound in the near corner. Halt again keeping it in. Going off the skate of Cam Burton and out of the zone, this goes. Cloutier. Nice feet in front. Oh, just off the stick of number 11. Make that number 12, Ryan Capez. He'll get off the ice. He was there. Yeah, that could have been a 4-2 game very easily. As Mitchell over to Halt again. Halt again with time. Wind up shot. Wide of the net. And the rebound by RIT. Gathered up by Fabin. Leaving into the far corner. Fabin to Halt again. Over the right side. Mitchell whiffing on it. Halt again, though, able to keep it in. Gets there in time. Cross ice pass to Andrew Fabin. Looking for his third goal of the night. Halt again, one time. Shot off the glass. And back out towards center ice. This goes. Getting back defensively is Halt again in time. Cut that off. Now the Tigers with some numbers, but Mitchell knows he's got to get off the ice. The rest of his line out of time here. Down to 27 seconds in this penalty. As now Hartley will leave it there. Far corner. Cam Burke getting dumped in the far corner. Hartley off a stick. Now the shot. Oh, Calvi watching it go to the far corner. He didn't know where it was, that rebound. Under two minutes to go here in the second. Penalty about to expire. As Lynch continuing on. Lynch holding on to it. We're back to even strength. Another penalty coming up here against Bentley. How do you like that? The late penalty is now the shot by Noyes. Mandalore doesn't realize that he can come off the ice. Finally, he does. Coming off. Got his attention there. Now Noyes. Now the Tigers with sk six skaters on the ice. The delayed penalty. Lynch into the far corner. In front. Full of Vecchia. Can't come up with it. Now the fans chanting RIT. The delayed penalty. Bentley is whooped here. And now finally, Noyes. No, they can't touch it. Now the Tigers, how about this? <laughs> They're going to regroup themselves and come back to the ice. <laughs> Finding Polavecchia. Polavecchia cutting through the net. The shot going wide of the net. And finally, well, it's not even because Bentley could touch it. It's because the net came off the magnets. Wow, what a sequence there. I don't think I've seen a team take the puck out of their own zone intentionally to reset there like the Tigers did. Bentley was in this absolutely gassed there. After the penalty was called, they had possession of the puck. I'm thinking for about a minute, it seemed like. A good minute where they had a couple of shots. And on that sequence, two minors get called. Switzer with the original call you just saw, and then Hardon 
See if the Tigers can make them pay here. Five on three to close out the second period. Uh, the Bentley Falcons win the faceoff, send it down the length of the ice. Bird up along the far side. Cameron Burke. The Detroit native will lead it there for Halpigan. Halpigan down low, off the stick of Mitchell, rebound in front, and Calvi will just jump on it with 1.39 remaining in the five on three. Covered up, yeah, 41 seconds remaining in the period. So we take another look here. Good idea by Haltigan, and Harley just didn't get full no. one on it, but if he did, he had a good shot and did not, and then Cal be able to cover up. Tigers controlling the puck here. Burt in the high slot. Fans chanting RIT. Big blast by Holt again. And again, Calvi not giving up a rebound. He's made some nice stops. Not giving up the rebound. Saw it the whole time. And, uh, Calvi has uh, really settled things down after replacing Kyle Rank. Joe Calvi getting a drink of water there. Still 29.2 remaining. So you see the stat there. Brenner just off the stick. Deflected back. Tigers taking their time here. Down low. Halt again. Cameron Burt. Halt again. Shot. Wide in the net. And the rebound with eight seconds remaining in the period. Burt cutting in. Burt in front. Still lose. Two seconds. Last shot. And Calvi will make the save in front. The rebound comes. And now we get some pushing after the whistle. Cameron Burt right in the middle of it. And some frustration here Should setting a lane for Bentley. A much better period for Bentley. I think once they made the switch from Wright to Calvi, Bentley started playing a lot better. Still some silly mistakes on the part of both teams, but let's face it, Bentley got themselves back in the game down 4-1. There you see Eric Peterson. That is their leading scorer who got mixed up into that. And looks a little shaken up. Hopefully he's okay. After two, the Tigers here in control. Four to one, they lead Bentley. They're watching RIT Sports Zone Live with Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. This is Shake Weight for Men, and it's going to kick your butt. Oh, that's it. In just six minutes, guaranteed. Shake Weight Secret The Power of Dynamic Inertia. As you shake, the weights at each end fire and recoil rapidly, sending a shockwave of energy that contracts your muscles up to 240 times a minute. So you build definition, size, and strength in less time. Biomechanics research proved that six minutes with the shake weight burns as much muscle energy as 42 with a standard dumbbell. Bottom line, you get ripped, defined, and stronger, faster. Call now and get shake weight and this six minute upper body workout DVD for just $29.95. Shake Weight also comes with this ironclad kick butt guarantee. Do the workout just once. If you're not blown away, return it for a 100% refund. Whew, that's it. Think you can handle it? Call now and build muscle and definition in just six minutes a day with Shake Weight for Men. Niagara University basketball is strong, fast, explosive, and there's always something to cheer about. Join the Purple Eagles on campus at the Gallagher Center and experience it live. Dish it off underneath and the finish! Niagara basketball, it's amazing. Niagara University Purple Eagles basketball. For tickets, go to purpleeagles.com or call 716-286-TIX. Does this happen to you? You're channel surfing, just flipping around, and then there it is. That show you're dying to see. But it started like 15 minutes ago. For Time Warner Digital Cable customers, there's an easy solution. You know that start over button that pops up when you come in on the middle of a show? Go ahead, press it. It won't cost you anything, and it will bring you back to the beginning of the show. My name is Janae, I'm a channel surfer, and I am Time Warner Cable.
broadband and soon 4G mobile internet. The fastest next generation internet at home and on the go. Dan. Sorry. At Time Warner Cable, we're moving technology forward to bring you back together. forward to bring you back to the magic this is uh, outstanding i'm yep. loving this yep there you see i've got uh, sarah dag number 21 katie stack katie stack who uh, may be the best player in division three women's hockey i think it's no safe doubt to about say. that so uh, we invite you to go check out the website and there you see it right there and again this is to help the tigers black out heart disease oh, yeah. and again the game times next week we're going to be with you on the time Warner cable sports net 7 o'clock against Plattsburgh on Friday night, 3 p.m. Saturday afternoon. If you've got kids, maybe you're on a tight budget, games are free, yeah. folks. Free. Right. Free. Is, I'm, I'm into the black jersey, I'll be honest yeah. with you. But free, you can't You're going to see some really good hockey. Absolutely. This women's team. Not to put the Maloik on them, Johnny, but they are strong. Talking about strong, you know what was weird? Brent Hardung was complaining about something. Uh, one of the players for uh, Bentley, he didn't come off the ice there right away. Uh, kind of talking to the officials for about two minutes. So things got a little chippy near the end of the uh, second period. It did, it did. You saw some, uh, really a lot of penalties during that period. But to Bentley's credit, once they made the switch, uh, from Rank to Kelby, they kind of settled in, started playing a lot better, I thought. I thought collectively they played better, and they've got the shorthanded goal. If they could have got one maybe towards the end, 4-2 would be a lot better. But 4-1, you know what? Just a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum, taken into third and even into tomorrow night's game. 3-0 the Tigers led after one. That would be Andrew Favick getting his ninth of the season, second tonight to make it 4-0. All right, T, as we take another look at the second Favick goal of the evening for the overhead shot. And Favitz has had a year. We talk with Wayne, he goes, Favitz has been really good for us. I mean, he uses the word really good. That means he's been outstanding. He's just some Brenner, Favitt. Uh, it's just been one of those seasons where they're just getting a lot of different players scoring. But Favitt has great energy on the ice. And the guy getting his eighth goal of the season. In fact, has two tonight, so he has nine on the season. And that uh, would be the last goal, actually, uh, that Kyle Rank, last shot he'd also see tonight. Kyle Rank getting pulled for Joe Calvi. A little bit of a different game. Uh, Bentley getting the bounce uh, after head coach Ryan Sutter, of course, making that change tonight. As uh, Bentley would get the next goal in the game, this would be Justin Brent left alone in front. This technically goes as a shorthanded goal. It does, and it was just like whoa, because the Tigers had just got on to the uh, just got on the power play, and then you get a look at it, and it's just one of those you know what little. Uh, Lucas, freakish type things that, you know, you're not going to see a puck hit by the chain, and what are you going to do? I mean, just he had really used defenseless on that. Yeah, literally, Andrew Favitt had just stepped out of yep. the box. It was four on four play, and you get that open ice, yep. and Bentley taking advantage of that. And Breton, uh, you know, he's shown some wheels. That's only his second goal of the season. 4-1 is where we're at, but if the Tigers take care of business tonight, John, they should get the two points, no doubt. Well, you're up three goals. You're still riding a hot goalie. The Tigers, after dominating the first, dominated about half of the second. I just thought Bentley played much, much better. But a three-goal lead if you're Wayne Wilson and Brian Hills, you feel pretty good going into the third. Coming to you tonight from the sold-out Frank Ritter Arena on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology. We'll take a short break. Tigers leading here 4-1. to one. This is RIT Sports Online on the Time Warner Cable Sports Network. So many choices. So many options. So many models. Introducing the most fuel efficient way to shop for a new car. Automotive on demand. Only on Time Warner Digital Cable. Tune to Channel 1276 right now to learn more about any vehicle, make and model. Automotive on demand. Brought to you by West Her on Channel 1276. 
Car owners, does your vehicle have less than 120,000 miles? Is your current auto warranty about to expire? Cover America Auto Care now offers inexpensive mechanical breakdown coverage direct to the public. Save thousands of dollars on auto repairs. Call and get a free no-obligation quote. This auto protection gives you a claims department that has an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. 24-hour emergency roadside assistance also included. Save on future car repair bills. Call for your free no-obligation quote now. 286 ticks. Hi, say hello to free DVR with Time Warner Cable's Triple Play. Digital cable, high speed online, and digital home phone. Three great services, each just $33 a month for the first year. So you can lower your cable TV bill and say hello to savings. Order now and you can get three months of DVR service free. You can even get three free months of HBO. Say hello to value. Call 1 866 339 band tonight everybody back in full force on campus here tonight first to two this weekend friday and saturday night and the tigers off to a good start tonight four to one two goals by andrew favitt tyler brenner and mark cornacchia also adding goals here tonight it's a game that really has never been in question here johnny no this fast start for the tigers uh you know get another goal in the second you got to feel good if you're the tigers taking a three goal lead into the third as i will get the thoughts here of assistant coach brian hills joining us uh, brian your team off to a good start tonight what do you think so far uh yeah great start in the first and pretty good at the start of the second and uh you know ever since they've taken that time out we've kind of uh you know i don't know just haven't been as uh, consequential so to say and uh, we've got to sharpen up a little you know the period ended up tied 1-1 you want to win the period uh so we've got to come out here ready to go in the third and we've got to come out with a four on three and be smart with the puck and you know hopefully get them back on their heels here hopefully get one early Brian, they seem to be a different team when they made the switch from Rank to Kelby. And, uh, yeah, as you said, following the timeout, but they seem to be, be a more confident team with Kelby uh, in that than they did with Rank. Yeah, I, I think I think part of it is you changed your effort. You know, just uh, as a team in general, you know, the, the kids probably got barked at a little, and you know, Rank wasn't getting a lot of great support necessarily, and. Uh, so hey, they're working a lot harder, and you know they, they don't want to. They didn't want to get, uh, you know, to get five nothing, six nothing. So they, they started bearing down, and they're playing well. So we've got to be real good here in the last 20. Uh, Brian Hill's assistant coach joining us. Andrew Favin with two goals tonight, and uh, Tyler Brenner as well. It certainly makes your job easier when uh, the big guns are contributing uh, like that, getting uh, three goals between two of your best players tonight. Yeah, and, I mean those guys been pretty good, pretty much the whole season for us. But it's nice to see. Uh, it's funny that. Uh, the Karnak and Knowles Murphy line uh, wears the gray jerseys in uh, practice and uh, they had a pretty darn good week last weekend at uh, Army and so they came back to practice this week all buzzing around and they would call themselves the silver line so uh, you know, and then the silver line came out and you know Karnak gets a goal tonight so you know you, you need everyone contributing and uh, you know hopefully we get a couple of more guys to contribute here in the third. I know Shane gives, uh, you know, gives up the goal really defenseless on that Brian but yeah. the more and more you watch him play I mean, it is. He just gets better and better every time he's out there. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, just like anything else. He hadn't played for a couple of years pretty much. And, you know, it's a, it's a confidence issue of, you know, getting comfortable in the net again. And, you know, he, he just has such a calm presence in there. You know, he doesn't uh, doesn't get himself out of control. He's not sliding by the, the posts. So he's, you know, he's cushioning pucks. He's deflecting pucks well. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully he can continue on like he's playing. Brian, a little bit of a curveball last weekend where uh, you were called upon to lead the team. Uh, how was that with Wayne? He must have really been in rough shape if he couldn't have made a trip. Yeah, I, I think he went uh, something like from Monday or Tuesday through Saturday without really uh, being able to hold anything down there. So 
Uh, he lost a little bit of weight, too, if you, I don't know if you noticed that part. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Johnny I, did, yeah. Uh, Brian, I'd, I'd, I, I'd, I, I'd say it was a good weight loss program, 12 to 15 pounds there, maybe. I can tell when someone loses a few LBs, Brian. I did point <laughs> it out. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So he's off to a good start in 2011. Who knows want to lose weight in the new year? Yeah, I just don't know if that's the way you want to lose it, but uh, we're, we're glad he's back. And I said, you know, I told him this week, he, you know, he was, hey, I'm going to be there Monday, this and that. And I said, hey, the main thing is you're here uh, this Friday when we play back. Uh, you know, we've been promoting this big event. Uh, and, and one last question. This is a little off topic, but for folks who don't know, your daughter is on the women's team here at RIT, number one in the nation. Next weekend, they are looking to pack the house against Plattsburgh. Brian, what is it like to not only be a coach, but just to, to be a dad, just to see the success that your daughter and the women's team is having right now? Yeah, uh, it's pretty darn cool. I mean, not, not, you know, not many guys, uh, you know, have kids playing college hockey, you know, have them playing at the, at the school they're at. You know, so I get to see, you know, and I don't get to see them a lot necessarily, but I certainly would, I get to see her play here at RIT more so than I would if she was playing at some school out east or out west. So, uh, and, you know, I, I hope they, they continue on and have a great weekend next weekend against Plattsburgh. It'd be great if people come out and support the girls because, uh, you know, Plattsburgh's one of the teams that they have to beat here down the stretch and maybe even in the NCAAs. Well, Brian, thanks a lot. Good luck and congratulations on everything. Go, uh, go close this one out here in the third. All right, thanks, guys. For Brian Hills, uh, assistant head coach of the RIT Tigers, associate head coach, actually, his title, and, of course, the father of uh, Allie Hills, uh, one of the senior leaders on the women's team. Uh, Johnny, what, a, what an impressive start here for the Tigers. Tonight. Uh, you know, as Brian mentioned, fast start, had a good first half of the second period. And he's right, after Bentley called that timeout, they uh, appeared to be a, you know, a different team. It's funny what effort will do. If you just put forth a little effort, good things happen. Bentley started to have a little bit better effort, got themselves back in this game. Let's take a look at the second period stats in a 4-1 game, a goal for each team in that period. And uh, there you see the shots on goal. At one point, the Tigers were behind in that category, so things a little more even. But the big uh, cat thing right there, if Bentley wants to get back in this game, he can't take five minors in that period. No, you can't. And, and, and the Tigers there you know, on the power play, you'd like to get maybe one uh, power play goal, at least from your special teams. But, uh, you know, up three goals going to the third. You gotta feel good. Well, the Tigers tonight, another sellout here at RIT. This is really a happening for a Rochester community. That is one reason why RIT, again, there, there's no public funds for this, folks. RIT is doing that all on their own. And here's the way you can contribute. The RIT power play, and it really not asking for a heck of a lot here, Johnny. No, not at all. Ten bucks, five dollars. I mean, a very, very simple donation. And, you know, every dollar counts. If you get a new arena that's going to be used for hockey, basketball. It's going to be a multi-purpose. It's going to be sweet. We can't wait for it to get built. And it's really going to really bring this RIT program to the next level. Who won on to play in a brand new arena here? So well, I, th I think that's the next step. You know, they've already got to the fro Frozen Four, but I think the next step now is to get a big Arena. Even Wayne mentioned that to me this week. He goes, it's time. We need a new rink <laughs> for all the fans. It is, yeah. You want to come and watch this team. Take a short break. Third period coming up next. There's only one concession stand here. There it is at the Ritter. Here are the Time Warner Cable Sports Now. Now, when we wrap up the end of the second period, you recall there's a little pushing and shoving. They're going to get a Cameron Burr for the minors. So what was a five-on-three power play advantage for the Tigers now is going to be a four-on-three. Penalty number 23, Dustin Cloutier. Two minutes for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. Oh, Cloutier getting 10 minutes on that. Two minutes for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. RIT penalty number 22, Adam Hartley, 2 minutes for roughing. That's Hartley, 2 minutes for roughing. RIT penalty number 22, Cameron Burt, 2 minutes for roughing. That's Burt. Babbitt will rotate around, so again, the Tigers here. We're going to get back that four-goal advantage. Lynch in front, batted right down, and just going to the side of the net. Rebound by Babbitt. And again, Babbitt looking for the hat trick tonight. He's going to leave it there for Brenner. 15 seconds remaining in the four on three, and then I'll quickly go over to a Bentley power play. Savage. Bringing it wide, feeding it right into Brenner in front. Down low to Favitt. Two Bentley players you're going to see come racing right out. And the power play has expired for RIT. And now it's going to be a Bentley power play as Noise has to get back. 
Switzer chasing after him. Tigers changing up their units on the fly here. 50 seconds remaining in the minor to Cameron Burt. Shot going down the left side. And nobody home at the right point for Bentley. Easy clear there for the Tigers. And again, if you're just joining us, Bentley was one of the worst power plays in the nation. Under 8%, 7.8% entering tonight. Knocked down in front. Janda will rotate it over the left side. And it went off the netting, and the puck will remain in the RIT end with 21 seconds remaining in the penalty to Cameron Burke. Yeah, their one goal coming shorthanded. 20 seconds left here on the power play. So very important if they could cash in here, but limited time to do so. Really would apply pressure on the Tigers if they could get a goal here, make it a 4-2 game. As the corner crew right now is serenading Joe Calvi. <laughs> Calvi's been here before. He's a senior. He's played well since uh, he replaced uh, Kyle Rank. Shanda, McReynolds, and Peter over the left side. And the Tigers just looking to take some time off. Cameron Burt will step out of the box in five seconds. Switzer up along the right side. And one late rush here for Bentley as Brenton, their lone goal scorer, has it in the far corner. And we're back to even strength. Burt steps over to the bench. And the Tigers will send out Murphy. On the left side. We'll have a Facebook question coming up here in a second. And again, you can write to us on Facebook. Just look it up, RITSZ Live, or you can send us a tweet. As now, Kornakia in front, right in the slot. And as the Switzer's long pass, intercepted by Holt again. Between the circles, Peterson will leave it on the left side. Cross ice pass, and Scott Knowles will dump it into Murphy. Hardin coming up with it, has it deflected away. Fitz Stevens shot over the left side. Feed over, now the pass in front, looking for count ice, couldn't connect, and the Tigers will break out here. A little over four minutes into this third period. Four to one RIT for just joining us. Three first period goals in this game has never really been in question tonight. As Knowles will deflect it, and this will not go for icing. It'll be waved off. Bonnet waiting for some help. He's going to leave it there for Rickford. And on the right side, here's Nudie. Centering pass. Looking for number 15, Joel Goodsell. And the Quake grad couldn't connect there, though, with the home fans watching. And the pass will go on in. So, uh, haven't seen much of the fourth line here tonight for Bentley. But uh, we saw Section 5 product, Goodsell, with a shot on goal. Johnny Kim Doyle writes to us on Facebook, just wondering if there's any new information on the new arena. As far as I know, no, just moving ahead with the with the fundraising. We don't know where it will be built specifically. Technically, how big it will be. We just know it's going to be built once the funds are in place. And that's the latest. Will there be a name on it? We don't know. But it is going to happen. It there's is going no to happen. Dialogue. We just don't know when there's actually going to be a shovel uh, in the ground. And where it's going to be built, we don't know that. We don't have a certain location, so to speak. Here's the shot and couldn't get through. It all started really, it's been going on for a couple of years, but then the, the frozen floor really kind of kicked it in the high gear, and that's when you really saw, saw the push there. Well, I think you're right. I think if there wasn't a frozen four, there wouldn't have been, I don't think, this, this massive push, but frozen for the buzz that it created during the offseason into the start of this season and I think the timing timing is everything in life and I think the timing was right for them now to go ahead and let's just do it because the program is ascending right now so to fulfill the needs you need a new arena in front is Brenner tried to stuff it in big blast and a kick save made Lynch comes up with it in the far corner. Lynch gets taken down. There's no call. And off the ice. Oh, is threading the needle there. Nice shot by number seven, Peterson. But the save made by Shane Manalora. 
along the left side. Kim, thank you very much for the Facebook comment. And if you want to write to us, by all means, do so. As we'll take more of your questions as the game goes along. Kelby holding on. The right will step aside. 4-1. Tigers lead here in the third. This is RIT Sports Online on the Time Warner Cable Sports Network. Here, and as you said, you know, take a page from what Sacred Heart did, carry that momentum. Maybe get a point tomorrow night. Maybe two. Tigers got to keep working here as Janda in front. Couldn't connect. Gets it behind the net, though. Centering pass right on front to Cotto. Oh, he sent it wide. Cam Bird now behind the net. Good looks there for the Tigers. Dakota's going to want another crack at that one. Had it right in the slot. And he's going to have to pull back that puck on the wrong side of the blue line. Dakota getting it back. Big blast. Going wide the net. And all the way down, this will rattle into the RIT edge. And Bentley will change up on the fly. Along the left side. Intercepted. Good sell from McQuaid. will dump it into the right side. And he's going to cut toward the net. He's got Hartley guarding him. Jamie Nudie in the near corner. Nudie's an interesting story, Johnny. His uh, grandfather was a Penn State quarterback. Years ago, recently passed away. And yeah, actually, uh, Joe was not the head coach, believe it or not. That's right. I never knew he was the quarterback coach. <laughs> yes. Before. Was not the head coach. Uh, Rip Engel, the coach at the time. You know Joe is old if his former players are, are become grandparents and then start to pass away. <laughs> you know he's old when these coaches, players that he coached, their grandkids are playing at the at the university. Not their kids, but their, their grandkids. grandkids. Yeah. You know the guy is, uh, oh, he's going to be 85 next December. Not stepping aside, right? Those are all rumors are false. Well, he has one year left on his contract. I can't imagine an 85-year-old getting a contract extension, but I think it depends on how the team is next year. I think when you get to 85, you're year-to-year you're -year officially. <laughs> in, in more ways than one, so. It is now the shot knocked down. And Hartley coming up with it. Hartley gets pulled down along the left side. And Tigers will bust out and just flick it on in. And uh, Calvi had a little trouble. Left the rebound there for Janda. Uh, Bentley cleaning it up behind the net. This is Marginski. So there's finally some different skaters here. As Stanisek along the right side. Has it intercepted by Murphy. Centering pass in front. Calvi the save. Made on Kornakia. Looking for his second. And a nice back check there by Sean Murphy. Boy, just a bad pass. Bad giveaway. Almost cost him. Yeah, the silver line. We learned that's what this line is called. Brian Hill's telling that us uh, in the intermission. As now Saracino intercepting it, going off his skate. Coming down low. In front. So Kornakia couldn't connect. Big blast by Murphy. Knocked right down by Peterson. And out of the zone this comes. Breton will come up the left side. Breton trying to cut toward the net. Oh, good defense there by the Tigers. They're going to right away. That's noise. What a night noise is that. Just an outstanding game. Saracino will dump it in, just get off the ice. The Tigers will change lines with 11.40 remaining in this game. Kolovecchia. Murphy will dump it in. Murphy will get off the ice himself. As McReynolds laying a body right there, letting Switzer know he's there. On the right side. And Puck left right in the high slot. Backhander. Matalor making the save and pouncing right on that rebound. But Simmons was right there. 11 16 remaining. Tigers lead by three, four to one. This is RIT Sports Home Live in the Time Warner Cable Sports Net. Extreme Discount Mattress Warehouse sells mattresses for less, a lot less. Don't pay high mattress store prices for quality mattresses ever again. All sizes, all types, pillow tops, memory foam, latex, we've got them for less. Over 20 queen comfort levels for under $500. Luxury 20-inch queen pillow top sets for $299. King pillow top sets for $399. 24-inch queen memory foam sets for $499. Twin sets now just $99. Three locations, Transit Road East Amherst, Transit Road Elmo, Niagara Falls Boulevard at the 290 Tonawanda. 
going green. Well, after our first 10,000 comprehensive home assessments and installing over 10,000 energy saving measures, well, I guess you might say we turned green a long time ago. And that's why in 2009, Husco was the number one producer in the Home Performance with Energy Star program in Western New York. So let us come evaluate, educate, and install your super energy saving products. So go with the greenest. Call Husco at 691 Home today. Every three seconds, someone needs blood. Area hospitals will use 60,000 units of blood this year. 100 people in western New York will need blood today. It could be you. ECMC is proud to partner with units, our local community blood bank, to guarantee that we'll always be ready. It's about an hour of your time. It's about life. Be a community blood donor. I was working in the automotive industry back in Detroit, and I was laid off from my position. I had to make a positive change. I chose ITT Technical Institute. Two years ago when I was laid off, you know, there's a lot of fear. What am I going to do to provide for my family? I don't worry about that anymore. I don't. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-551-9601. They're going to pop Kornacki on a hold there. He doesn't like the call. No, he didn't like it at all. Away from the action, but called for it. And Bentley now with their power play. And I guess that would be, even if Bentley should lose the game, I think they get a power play goal. I think would be a win for him. McReynolds getting called on the hold. I beg your pardon. As you see him in the box. That uh, we've gone almost the whole game here, John, and the, <laughs> finally McReynolds ends up in the penalty box. Something wrong. There's a shot at Mal Moore making a big pad save here for the rebound. And that's knocked back down. Tiger's shorthanded. Here comes Knowles. Knowles, shorthanded shot. Big save made by Calvius Cornacchio was right on the doorstep. And coming back the other way here is Bentley. Brenton. Right out in front, here's Switzer, the shot knocked down. Once again, Scott Knowles, good defense there. What well, great play. Getting down low, blocking the shot. Switzer has to save it from going out of the zone. Gets it right back. Shot through traffic, knocked down in front. Campanelli, this is Brenton coming up with it. Cutting toward the net, and again, this is one of the worst power plays in the nation for uh, Bentley has here, but they look pretty good on this sequence. Got a couple good looks. Yeah. Dakota trying to wrap it around. Centering out in front. Harden couldn't get to it in time, and RIT will just gently clear it out of the zone. KFS coming up with it. Leave it along the left side. It's cowed ice. Here's a big blast by KFS, and making the big pad save was Matalor, and the puck will deflect all the way down the ice. 38 seconds and counting going in the penalty to McReynolds. 4-1 RIT. That's Burr buzzing behind the net. Almost took that one away. Murphy intercepting it. Sean Murphy, shorthanded, doing some nice work there, waiting for some help, and he's going to opt just to take some time off the clock. That was Burt, which forced that turnover. Murphy there to scoop it up, but Burt causing the havoc down here at the end. Here's Hardung up along the left side, putting on the brakes, a shot, and a stick save made by Manalora, and we're back to even strength. Along the left side, and pass is deflected down low. Lynch battling there with Ledford. Ledford finally get, able to get it out of the zone. Behind the net once again, this goes. Wrapping around Goodsell. Rochester native up to Rickford. Rickford trying to cut toward the net. The backhander ran out of room. Cleared in front. Goes to the opposite side. Switzer will hold it in for the Bentley Falcons. And as the RIT fans chanting defense, we are down to eight minutes remaining in this game. A game that has never been in question. Still no whistle as the puck will squirt free to the opposite side. 
in the far corner. Here's Rickford once again. And now breaking out, here's Fab. And the Tigers will change up as Rabel will dump it on in and holding off for the faceoff with Andrew Fabbitt right there. We'll have a faceoff coming up in the Bentley end. 7.36 remaining. Tigers by three. This is RIT Sports Zone live at the Time Warner Cable Sports Network. Corner crew waving at the camera. Yeah, Everybody fired it. up here tonight. I'll give them a little air time. They love it. Yeah. Why not? I think we should put you out there, Johnny, uh, during uh, the corner crew for one segment. What do you think? I wouldn't mind it, Gino. Give me a little mic. Be the analyst from in there. Coming up the ice is Brett. Offside the call. He's really, really slowed down here in the third. Really a lot. It's been a, you know, the last few minutes here. Here you see, there's a good stat. 22 straight power plays the Tigers have killed. Well, Wayne loved to talk to them this week. Yeah, he just said, you know, their penalty kill is getting better and better. And he said their power play is going again, even though they didn't cash in here the last few opportunities. But their penalty kill has been outstanding. All starts with number one, Shane Matalora. Another solid effort, and again, undefeated on the season, looking to go 10-0-2 overall. As now the Tiger picking off right at center ice. It'll be interesting to see how Wayne, now that we're really getting into the nitty-gritty portion of the schedule, is now puck going high off the glass. And now deflected as Matt Lohr making the save. He'll clear to the far side. And Bentley will keep it in shot. And Matalora holding on for the faceoff. Should be interesting to see how Wayne Wilson handles it because there's no question Shane Matalora is the number one. And how often, if at all, we'll see uh, the, the other two goaltenders for our Boy, if he's playing so well, you hate the settle. You yeah. know, that's just the way he's playing. He's just hot right now and, and healthy. You know, I guess you just keep riding him. Watson and Ropenin. We saw Watson on New Year's night. Ropenin, you know, he's played pretty well, too, but it has been Shane's year so far. Yes. As now big pad save made by Calvi. Now the rebound over to the right side. And the Tigers right in front of the band here, trying to hold it in. Back out towards center ice. Cam Burke. Opposite side. Cam Burke getting some time on the blue line here. Side. Six seventeen remaining here. As the Tigers leading four to one. There you see promo for RIT Sports Zone Channel Twenty Six Fridays at six. And if you miss it, well, <laughs> RITSE.com. Go there anytime. By the way, on RITSZ.com, you click on the button Hockey Central, highlights from the whole year, all the broadcasts. You gotta love that. It's yeah, a great it's really cool. Oh, it is. Well, and you get starting to feel maybe the magic, another magical yeah. run for the Tigers, <laughs> the way things are going. And possibly they're getting better and better. They're young at certain positions, but you're seeing that quote unquote maturation process for some of the freshmen. Now the Tigers trying to clear it out. Now down the ice this goes. And we'll have a face-off coming out. Side of the zone as Kornakia mixing it up with Switzer here. Right in front of the corner crew. And uh, the linesman coming over to separate the two. And they're bringing Switzer over to the box. Indeed they are. Yes. And this is going to be a Tiger power play. We'll see if it's a two-minute variety here. Head coach Wayne Wilson in his 12th season with the program. 
We'll take another look here. Look. Kornacki comes oh, in there hard. They gave him the 10 minute misconduct. And there it is. Oh, that's, yeah. Kornacki is just playing hard. He's not, you know, he's not giving up on the play. Uh, that was just frustration yeah. on Switzer. His night is done. A 10 minute misconduct. So the Tigers will be on the power play here for the next two minutes. And you see Knowles there taking exception. So Mike Switzer losing his cool there. The junior from Calgary. A defenseman. Off coming to the right of Joe Calvi. This will be Cam for Mr. Uh, versatility. He's out playing up front, but we've seen him back on the blue line this year, John, one of the unsung heroes. As the hold up in play, as there you see, he's going to get serenaded. That's Mike Switzer with a 10 minute misconduct. He'll uh, take an early shower tonight. He looked over at the Tigers bench in the process, but he's done for the rest of the night with 5.43 to go. Base off one by Cam. He'll set up in front along with Thavitt. Up top, Noise can't hold it in, and Tigers have to clear the zone. Thavitt will wrap it around. You hear that puck going off the glass, and Mitchell over there holding it in. He's got Brenner down low. Steady throws it up top to Noise. Tiger power play. Thavitt, big pad save, and Calvi looked behind him. He thought it might have trickled through. But he'll hold on for the faceoff. Look at Kelby Little love the way he's played here since taking over. He's played well. Got a lot of goal. Carry that into uh, tomorrow night. He, you're right. He thought maybe he gave one up. He didn't know he had it. Watch him look back. You know, you go, oh, I got it. I had it all the way. Yeah. <laughs> As now the puck is kept in by Burt. And the Tigers fab it. will backhand it into the far corner. Burt coming up with it. Cam Burt down low to Brenner. Oh, the pass just a little too far for Mitchell. Good idea. Just a little out of his reach. Cam Burt up top. Fab faking the blast. Now feeding it down low. Brenner, oh, to noise. And on the wrong side of his stick. And one minute through the penalty to Switzer. Tigers will bring it right back into the zone, however. And we have another penalty coming up, and this is going to go for boarding. Not sure who the Tiger is down low as Brenner coming over here, and hopefully he's okay. Fabin, I yeah, think it's Fabin, down. Yeah. He's had a couple of goals tonight. And quickly, RIT trainer coming out onto the ice, and Fabic gets up right away. As we'll take another look here, John, and this is a fatigued Bentley team right now, and it's showing the Tigers will be on a five-on-three power play. Look at number 28 for RIT. Get checked right into the boards from behind. That is the most dangerous play in hockey. Yes. Yep. Yep. Michael Williams. Good, the officials recognize the, the danger of that play. And there you see Andrew Favitt, Wayne Wilson coming right over. Yeah, I don't like the way this game is ending here tonight, no, Johnny. No, it's, uh, let's get this run off this final 434. Five on three power player here for the Tigers. Cam Burt. Baltigan now joining the power play. Lynch as well. Lynch. Halt again. Shot wide of the net. Rebound Hartley backhanded, and the Tigers halt again can't keep it in. 30 seconds remaining in the five on three. And the Tigers have uh, that five minute major power play, so basically the rest of this game, they're going to be put the man advantage. Remember, on a major, it's unlimited scoring. The remainder of this game, Bentley will be shorthanded. Burt. Can't hold it in. Lynch there as well. Now coming up the ice. Ben Lynch got his first goal last weekend. Cross ice pass for Hartley. A little too strong. Hartley in the far corner. Tigers cycling it right around. 
Burt, blast shot wide of the net. Hartley cannot bring it down, but the Tigers able to keep it in. Here's Cameron Burt. Burt, shot going high over the net, and Lynch will track it down in the near corner. Tigers have had some looks here as Lynch behind the net. He's going to bring it wide. Now over to Tyler Brenner, back to Hartley. Throws it up top of the hole to him. Lynch, feeding it to Cam Burt. Now it is a five-on-four power play, by the way. Shot right out in front. Burt trying to knock it home. Cannot. Into the near corner, this goes. And Lynch holding it in. Holt again. Right side. Here's Lynch. Down low to Burt. Tiger just cycling it right around here. Sooner or later, they'll get the shot they like. As Burt trying to skate away from some trouble. And now finally... Bentley will get it out of the zone. They're going to try to change up. Indeed, they will, as Haltigan will now bring it back himself, and this will give RIT an opportunity to change up their power play in it. Haltigan on the right side to Scott Knowles, working on a power play here. 2.20 remaining in the game. And now we get a whistle as Dakota gets shoved after the whistle by Campanelli. And the fans right in front of that first row there. Not liking that at all. No. I mean, settled down. 2.16 to go. Frustration now beginning to show. This is run off the final 2.16. Take the defeat if you're Bentley at this point. All right? You come back tomorrow night. You played much better from about midway through the second period. And Bentley, and we got another minor coming up here. As Mitchell drawing the penalty, and this is going to be on Campanelli. He's going to go to the box. So we'll have another 5-on-3 power play here, John. It's like he was looking for a penalty. He tried to get one just a few minutes, a few seconds ago. He didn't call it. Now he gets one now. RIT fans liking it. It's actually going to go on Stanisak, number 18. So... Is Bentley going to have enough players to <laughs> wrap up this game? Uh, two players already. Bentley penalty on this game. In front noise. Kolovecchia. Mitchell in the far corner. Scotty Knowles. Saracino. Noise in front is Mitchell. And the five on three power play here for RIT. Saraceno right out in front. Knowles couldn't connect. Kolovecchia to Saraceno. Noise right over to Kolovecchia. Shot. Oh, a nice wow. glove save. Best save of the night by Joe Calvi. Boy, he took it right out of the air. That was smooth. Great save. I don't know how you even saw it. Looked like Colavecchio is going to get his fifth goal of the season. We take another look here. Sneaks right into the back side. There you go. And then, wow. Now he put it right. You know, you look at it again. Put it right there. He got a little bit of lift on it. Might yeah. have had a shot. Had a little bit of an angle. But, like you said, no lift. And Calvi with a nice save. Fabbitt back on the ice. That is a good sign for IT. For a big shot. Oh, and the stick save made. And it goes up into the corner crew. Now... You know, physics a major here. How does that happen, John, if a puck goes into the corner through that? Yeah, there, there must be a hole in that there or I something. I think it went actually up top. There's a little gap. It went over the net up top. Yeah, that, that's not more than like a foot that could clear before yeah. it hits the roof there. So, yeah, you, see, you could be behind the net. You still got to keep your eyes open here when you come to a high Fab in front. Cross ice pass. And there will be no pulling the goalie tonight here for Bentley in a game that is decided 4-1. to Tigers with a 5-on-3 advantage for the remainder of this game as Haltigan will slow up. Now feed it down low to Fabbitt. Fabbitt with an opportunity to get the hat trick here late. Haltigan, big pad save made by Calvi. Got 30 seconds remaining in the game. Fabbitt down low. Pulls back, back up to Haltigan. Brenner is sitting right out in front. Shot. Brenner deflects it wide. Behind the net, this goes. 20 seconds left. And the puck will be cleared down the ice. And this 
pretty much will do it for the game. Ten seconds remaining. And Burt will go back. And the Tigers here. No rush is needed. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> Burt gets tripped up. They're not going to put up the arm on that. Bonnet the quick shot near the end of the game. The RIT Tigers tonight. Three first period goals. They ride it. And... A little pushing and shoving after the final horn. Tigers win tonight, four to one. John, your thoughts? Well, I thought, you know, great first period, solid the first 10 minutes, pace slowed down. Bentley made the change at the timeout, played much, much better. But overall, I think Wayne Wilson has to be pleased. He gets two points, gets the win, wins by three goals. They'll look for the sweep tomorrow night. Shane Manalora remains undefeated on the season. He picks up win number 10 as there you see head coach Wayne Wilson and his RIT Tigers tonight getting the win. The postgame show coming up next. This is RIT Sports Zone Live on the Time Warner Cable Sports Network. <sighs> Prince win tonight for the RIT Tigers, taking it to Bentley. John DeTulio, 4-1 to the final. 4-1, really no doubt uh, at all in terms of this game. They started fast and really never let up. They rolled to another win. They're cruising here. They're a tough team to beat at home. Number, simple. number one star tonight, Andrew Favitt. A couple of goals. I thought that one line with Favitt and Brother all over the place tonight. It's all over the place. You saw Lynch come up with a, uh, with a goal last week. I thought he played well. I thought uh, Greg uh, Noise played very, very well tonight. A couple of the freshmen tonight, but I mean, Favitt's the spark plug. You look at Brenner with a goal. Their stars played well tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, this was a 4-1 game. Kyle Rank, uh, the goaltender for Bentley, allowing all four goals. But for the second half of this game, John, from midway through the second in the third, RIT didn't score. So uh, should there be cause for concern or, you know, at least be put on notice you need a full effort for tomorrow night? Absolutely. I think that's going to be the message Ed Wayne's going to give his team tonight is that we need to play a full 60 minutes or we're not going to win tomorrow night, plain and simple, because I thought from about midway through the second period on, Bentley was much more competitive. A welcome to the post-game show. Gene Battaglia along with John DeTulio here on RIT Sports Zone Live. 4-1 to one, our final tonight. If you're just tuning in here a little late, RIT getting it done tonight thanks to three first period goals, and we've seen that happen a few times this year, John, where they, they come out of the gates flying, but this is, uh, you know, they haven't played in front of the student body since December 17th. It's been a long time since the Tigers have had a, well, they had a full house here on New Year's night, but it was a different crowd. This crowd, uh, the full band, the full corner crew, was a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, all the elements were in place. It is the schedule a little goofy where they haven't played, as you said, in front of the student body in almost a month, but tonight you can tell they fed off that energy from the corner crew, a sold-out crowd. I thought they were spectacular in the first period and never looked back. Let's take a look at the final stats, of course, in this 4-1 to one win for RIT. Tenth win of the year for goaltender Shane Matalora and uh, the Tigers uh, in every statistical category tonight getting it done and Bentley taking a lot of penalties toward the end of this game. This could have been worse than 4-1 to one tonight. Yeah, I got a little ugly, got a little chippy, uh, lack of focus, just a lot of mistakes there at the end. 53 penalties minutes tonight Ooh. from Bentley I mean come on <laughs> yeah that's just that's just lack of just mental mistakes you know they got chippy at the end but uh, you know thankfully they, you know no severe injuries as, as far as we can see uh, took place today and Bentley coming in with one of the worst power plays in the nation at 7.8 percent I got to get out my calculator it doesn't help to go 0 for 7 on that tonight but uh, conversely the Tigers that's a little surprising yeah 53 minutes of penalties the Tigers all those goals uh, three of them even strength one of them was shorthanded not one tonight on the power play. no 0 for 14 com uh, combo so I mean that's one of the things that you know you raise a red flag is you thought the power play was starting to get in place but you have seven opportunities tonight and you can't cash in it was uh, Tyler Brenner getting things started tonight is 17th of the season. He's now tied for second in all of Division One hockey. And, you know, if there's any doubt, uh, Tyler Brenner, he's going to play at the next level, John. The kid's a stud. Big kid. He can do everything. Uh, he is he is their big, he's their superstar. He's the kid inside where you just can't move him out of there. And he just does everything so, so well. And he is having one of those years right now. They are rotting Tyler Brenner. Brenner coming from Noise and Lynch. That made it one nothing. RIT. And then Andrew Favitt uh, kind of had a, a little mini breakaway. Takes the shot. The shot gets deflected back to him right off the goaltender rank. Favitt kind of pushes it with his hand back into to rank. They're like, they're like kind of volleying it back and forth. Let's see if this is the one here. Yes, this is uh, going to be the the favicle now watch it right in midair yeah. john and then look at that it's showing a little skill there 
It's like a little baseball hit that uh, right back through the box. Able to swing down on that, stays with it. It looked like that puck was suspended for uh, at least five to ten seconds where it was in the air and then he's able to swat it in. And uh, originally ruled no goal, but the officials got together. That made it two to nothing. Favitt, first of two goals on the night. Four to one, our final tonight. We're joined by the head coach, Wayne Wilson. Wayne, I got to imagine you had to be pleased with the way your team came out of the gate tonight. I thought uh, everyone was right on their game right from the start, and uh, I think things changed a little bit when they changed their goalie. They took a timeout. The game got a little chippy in their power play penalty killing. Uh, very happy with our penalty kill, uh, disappointed with our power play. We just weren't making good decisions and uh, weren't finding the open guys. Uh, uh, I thought that was probably the only part of our game that I was disappointed with was our uh, our power play, but uh, otherwise uh, I thought a real good effort and an another very difficult win. When you look at some of your players, you got Brenner has just had a great year in Favitt. Your your star players just and, and Shane, the way they have been playing all year and then again tonight, your you know your star players stepped up. Yeah, I thought uh, as I mentioned though, I thought everyone played real well, but yes, uh, in particular uh, your go to guys uh, were able to go to and I thought they played uh, extremely well. But I thought we had good balance. Uh, I thought uh, Kornacki's line played uh, very well tonight, uh, Kalavecchia. So there was a lot of uh, different other people that were contributing and I think really kind of uh, helped in keeping uh, any momentum that we were able to get early. Uh, we were able to sustain it because everyone was going. 53 minutes of penalties uh, for Bentley tonight, Coach. Uh, but your team didn't get pulled into any of that nonsense at the end. You had to be, I'm sure you're pleased with the discipline your team showed at the end of the game. Yeah, I thought we showed some discipline there. And, and, and you know, they were, they were frustrated, probably a little embarrassed uh, the way the game started. And uh, I understand where they're coming from. And uh, uh, they got themselves back in the game, I thought. And, uh, you know, they, they disrupted the game, the flow of the game. And, and uh, so credit to them. I think uh, tomorrow night's game is going to be that much more difficult. Uh, uh, it, it won't be an easy game, and we've got to be ready to, to be disciplined and ready to go right from the get-go. Wayne, how about the way your team's playing right now? You're starting to get that separation there in the standings. It seems like you guys are just getting better and better playing really good hockey as you approach February. I, I think the best thing that uh, we're doing right now is we're focusing. So our, our whole focus is uh, our game tomorrow night against Bentley. We're not thinking, geez, if we win and someone else loses, what, what do the standings look like? I think that's where you get into trouble, and uh, there's just too many obstacles, too many good teams to, uh, uh, you know, take points from you. So I, I think it's important that we just stay focused on, on the next game and what we need to do. And, and if we can do that, uh, uh, when the season's over, you look at the standings, and, uh, and I think uh, good things can happen from it. Now, Wayne, we, we say this very good-naturedly. You look great. You lost some weight. How'd you do it, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> a little sickness here and there, and uh, it's the best exercise I've done in a while. I've been doing crunches there last weekend, uh, a different kind of crunches than uh, I was hoping for. Uh, uh, really, uh, it was the first two games I've missed as a player. I, I, I had a record there at one point of 165 straight games, and I've never missed one as a coach, and... Uh, I, it took me out, uh, but obviously when you've got people uh, like Brian Hills and Dave Insolaco and, and Mike Germain, uh, the team was always in good hands. Hey, is that worse watching a game on your couch? Because that game, we didn't do that game. That was uh, Fox Television downstate doing that game. How difficult was it? not having anything to do with it you're on your couch watching your team a lot of similarities the refs don't listen to me when i'm live and they don't listen to me when i'm <laughs> screaming at them through the tv so uh there wasn't much difference but yeah you know it, it was it was t really different and uh uh frustrating and everything else but uh i was really excited the way they played last weekend and and they did a great job then too well wayne uh, glad you're back to full strength and congratulations on your team's victory tonight thank you all right, head coach Wayne Wilson tonight and his Tigers winning here 4-1. to one. And in case you don't know the backstory of that, uh, Wayne basically had uh, the flu, stomach virus. And, you know, you don't want to gut it out for this reason. You don't want to get any of your players sick. Yeah. So Wayne did the right thing, stayed at home last week, and uh, had to watch it on television. One of the worst. If you're going to get the flu, that's like the worst type to get. Are you yeah. kidding me? You're, what are you going to do? You can't do anything. No. And, and by the way, he does look good. Yeah. He looks real good. Yeah, get him on the treadmill. Maybe Mrs. Wilson, you know. <laughs> you don't feel so bad bad now if you want to gorge yourself treat yourself you know he's left face looks thin 
Not that he had a punch. He had a little pouch. I, it's thin, though. Again, I said good-naturedly, Coach, if you're He's watching the, the replays. Wade. Yeah, we love good. Wade. We love Wade. Uh, Wade to be joined by uh, goaltender Shane Malora tonight. How about that, Shane? Uh, he hasn't lost yet. No, I mean, no, he hasn't. Yeah. You, you, you know, we thought Jared DeMichael was good last year. And Shane is approaching that status maybe more so the way he's playing right now. Well, he's playing great, and now we're joined by the sophomore goalie from Salinas, California. Shane, welcome to RIT Sports Zone Live, and I'm sure it, it is easy for you when your team jumps off to a 3 nothing first period lead the way they did tonight. Yeah, definitely. They uh, jumped out early, and then they let me see the first shots right off the start, so uh, it was pretty easy to start playing get in the game it seems like you're in a zone Shane it, it kind of describe to us you know what it's like right now because it seems like it's coming easy to you it seems like night in and night out yeah that's that's one of the things I wanted to focus on uh, throughout the summer when I stayed here was was just to try to simplify everything and not try to uh, do too much and and do stuff that I'm not used to doing so I just try to simplify everything and and it's been working out so far now right now we're taking a look at one of your nice saves tonight Shane uh, this is a defense that in front of you was a it was a big question for this reason not too many defenses in division one hockey have to start three freshman defensemen Rabel noise Dakota all in front of you tonight how are these guys coming along for you they've definitely been coming along uh, since the beginning of the season they've they've improved tremendously um, the, just from the first start when I was watching when I was hurt, they just, you could tell that they're going to be good and we just had to be patient with them, but uh, they've been working really hard throughout the season and they've, they've been getting great. This game seemed to get a little chippy at times last night. What was it like out from up here? It looked like it got real chippy there at the end. Yeah, yeah they, they were trying to start stuff up and, and sort of get momentum for tomorrow, but uh, we had to keep our cool start towards the end and try to stay out of the box. So. Uh, couldn't give them too much momentum going into the mall. Yeah, you know, and, and this is, a, you know, your team didn't score the last uh, period and a half. This is, uh, you know, an Atlantic hockey game. I, I would imagine tonight feels great, but you, you definitely want the four points this weekend. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, one of our goals uh, to get as many points as possible right now through through the end of the season, and and we want to come out tomorrow and, and just be prepared for, for a battle, and we know they're going to be ready tomorrow and be, be better than they were tonight. So uh, we just want to be ready for that. Shane, you're the guy, it seems like, the rest of the way. You'll play both nights, right? Friday and Saturday. Regard I mean, if you get, obviously, if you guys keep winning, but you're going to be the guy, you know, between the pipes Friday and Saturday night the rest of the way. I would hope so. Uh, that's one of, the, one of my goals that I set for myself, to, to just step up and become a starter. And uh, it's been working out so far as of recently, and and uh, I want to keep my momentum going. Last uh, question real quick, Shane. How does a kid from Salinas, California, end up at RIT? <laughs> uh, kind of a long story, but uh, I sort of just ended up here, and, and it's a great uh, great spot, and I'm glad I'm here. Well, we're glad to have you. Shane, thanks so much. Congratulations on the win tonight. All right, thank you. Shane Matalora uh, getting the job tonight. 26 saves in the win. Good job I, for the RIT I, I just go back to our first broadcast. We had Barry Melrose on. Yep. He goes, you ride a hot goalie, look out. And they've got a hot goalie right now. You get a hot goalie, you can beat anybody in the country. So I'm just saying, it's you know, it's mid-January, but if Shane continues to develop, continues to stay hot, look out. Look yeah. out for the Tigers. That's it. Next weekend, the women. Uh, the men yeah. are rolling, the women. We have uh, game-worn jerseys. Well, they will be game-worn that you can bid online. And this is going to be blackout heart disease and that's going to be the promo i've got sarah dag you've got katie, katie stack. stack so again uh you can win these online and uh the website just go to rit.edu black slash uh, fundraiser and uh you know, kind of turn it around there see dag and stack thank nice. you ladies for letting us uh, use your jerseys tonight black jerseys so we saw the men uh do this for the benefit uh, yep. for the late craig sharon in the first game of the season and now we're going to have the women doing this uh, again for a great cause and there you see help the tigers black out heart disease and again the bidding will close on the 22nd yep. rit.edu backslash hockey fundraiser hockey fundraiser uh, make sure I get it correct there uh, before we close out tonight and again we'll be with you for both those games next weekend seven o'clock for the women on Friday night three o'clock in the afternoon and again Plattsburgh the big big rival is the Tigers marching toward a national championship on the women's side John your final thoughts tonight an impressive win yeah in and I, th I thought Wayne hit it right on he just got contributions from a lot of different players tonight and Shane Manalora right now is a hot goalie. No question about it. But I got to give Bentley some credit. I thought the last...
period and a half, they played very, very well. So got a little chippy at the end, which should uh, set the uh, table very nicely for tomorrow night. Well, well uh, Tigers looking for a four-point weekend. We invite you to join us tomorrow night, 7 o'clock for the airtime. For our director, Mark Fergalli, and my partner, John DeTulio, my name is Gene Battaglia. Once again, our final score tonight, the Tigers win 4-1. to one. Have a good night, everyone.